Jack Dangerman, and I'm just here today interviewing a very special person, a person I met five or six years ago, Felix Finkbeiner. You were 13 years old, now you are 19 years old. I am indeed. <laughs> I was inspired by Felix at the European Users Conference because he came and gave me this audacious idea. Some kid just comes along and says, what did you tell me? You wanted to... Plant a trillion trees, I think. Plant a trillion trees. And I thought, oh, okay. I'm going <laughs> to write this kid off. Nice, nice little boy like that. That wasn't the case. Felix embraced the concept of GIS as a kind of platform for taking on this vision of planting trees to restore ecology. And, well, Felix, why don't you tell me your story again? Well, Plant for the Planet started off as a very small school project 10 years ago. I was yeah. supposed to give a presentation in my class about the climate crisis. And when I prepared that presentation, I found out about Vangari Mataya. And yeah. I think she and was she also was my friend, yeah. yeah, your friend and your big inspiration, I think. Um, and, and she inspired us, my classmates and me, to start um, planting trees with the original goal of planting one million trees in each country of the world. And after about three years, we achieved that goal with children and youth planting their millionth tree in their countries, in the, in the first countries. And we really thought about where do we go from here? And um, we found out that we could globally plant about one trillion trees. That's the maximum number of trees we could plant globally. So since then, our mission is to convince the world to plant a trillion trees. Um, and to make that possible, um, we are creating um, scientific, um, yeah, um, supporting scientific research to, to support these goals. But our main goal is also to support all these incredible number of tree planting organizations that already exist everywhere in the world and make um, their work easier. So rather than trying to do it all yourself, you're really collaborating and leveraging. Exactly. There's so many wonderful organizations um, all around the world. Obviously, we are not the first ones to think about tree sure. planting. So many people have been doing that, but they often lack um, resources to, to be able to track all of their work and, most importantly, to make it public. They um, generally lack funding and support internationally because nobody knows about their work, regardless of how well they're doing it. Why are you doing this? I think mostly because this affects us and our generation, right? We always talk about the next generations when we talk about the climate crisis, but this next generation is really us. We are going to be the ones um, that are facing this problem. Um, and it's our generation that's going to be the ones suffering from this. So the issues of climate change are fundamental mm -hmm. and global and affecting all of us. We see it, for example, today at, in the big hurricane in Texas. Mm -hmm. these unusual weather events, or we see it here in Southern California mountains, all the trees are burning down. Millions and millions and millions of trees dying because of the effects of climate change. And yet, we still have polarized politics about whether, climate, whether we can do anything about climate change, or that whether there's humans that are actually the cause of climate change. What are your thoughts about this? Yeah, I think that because of all of this, there's so many roadblocks um, on getting something done. Um, and we children, youth, we want, just wanted to do something, wanted to get involved, and we found that tree planting is the easiest thing to do something. In other words, forget about going right or going left, just exactly. go forward with planting exactly. trees, right? <laughs> yeah, tree planting, tree planting, of course, isn't the only solution. We no. can't solve these problems with tree planting, but no one can argue against tree planting. It's something that we can all right? do. It's something we can all do, and and there can be huge arguments about um, all, most, yeah, basically all other solutions to the climate crisis. But no one can argue against tree planting because even if you don't agree with, with climate science and don't accept climate science, there's nothing you can say about tree planting because of all the wonderful other benefits. I, and I, lo I love Felix. Don't you love <laughs> Felix? Because, fr frankly, it's, those of you who know me know that I plant a lot of trees. I've planted thousands and thousands and thousands of trees. Mm -hmm. I just do it. That's what made me fall in love with your vision right away. It's going to take all kinds of yeah. human action to do it. But one of the ones that I love is this idea of being positive about the future by creating a more uh, livable uh, environment. And whether it's in cities uh, or in nature, uh, just plant trees. So this is a great thing.
Well, I'm interested in how you are using or plan to use GIS uh, or technology to really help you. Well, what we are developing right now is essentially um, a platform, we call it, um, or we conceive of it as something like an Airbnb or an Uber for, for trees. Mm -hmm. And it connects all these tree planting organizations all around the world with people that want to support tree planting on an app, on a web app and a mobile app mm -hmm. um, to make tree planting as easy as possible yes. for everyone. That app will allow people to either register trees they've planted themselves mm -hmm or um, to donate trees or donate money to tree planting organizations mm -hmm. internationally. And obviously to make something like that, um, that work, we need to establish trust. Mm -hmm. People need to be able to trust these organizations all around the world that they are actually um, doing, the, doing the wonderful work of, of tree planting. And to make that possible, we, we want to use, or we are using um, ESRI ArcGIS technology um, to make all of that work transparent. That's really exciting. I think tree planting starts with where, mm -hmm. and we think about the science of where. Where do you plant the tree? And I think some of the layers in ArcGIS Online can give some guidance or modeling about where, where not only what trees can grow, but also where we need to plant trees on a priority basis. Have you given that some thought? Yeah, we are actually establishing a research institute at the moment. It's going to open its doors on um, this October. Mm -hmm. And one of the research priorities um, for this institute is, first of all, developing global maps of where th um, these trillion trees can be planted exactly mm -hmm. to, to yeah, incentivize communities to get, um, to get active. But also one of the topics we're looking at is which trees are best planted exactly. where. Yeah. And What's really interesting here is that there's very little research onto um, growth rates of trees in different, in different soils in different countries and different climates. So one of the things we want to use is through that global map of all these tree planting org organizations um, that all map their, their tree planting work through ArcGIS, um, all that data will then be fed into that research institute mm -hmm. and they can then um, analyze that data and make suggestions of which tree species are best planted where. Um, on a global scale. You know, Felix, I don't know if I ever told you, my original training was landscape architecture. Mm -hmm. And we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what trees grow where best. So there's this whole community of horticulturalists and landscape architects who not only understand trees and their habitats, but particularly the landscape architecture community, and we have some friends in common here, they, they're designing where so we like to call that here um, geodesign, mm -hmm. the next step beyond GIS. So GIS tells us where, but then designing alternative strategies for let's put a million trees here, or 10 trees there, that's kind of a, a, another step. And I, I'm kind of interested in this notion of how we can integrate in geodesign into your app. That's a really fascinating thought to, to essentially provide that advice to, um, to all these actors around the yes. world. It's not just design, it's not just uh, directive, uh, okay. like a suitability map, it's also beginning to get people to think about the idea of creating the future through this uh, medium of landscape tree planting. So we create an experience or we create a place uh, with a certain kind of experience as human beings. So it's not just the ecological dimensions of tree planting, it's the human experience dimensions of mm -hmm. making cities more livable, for example. Where should we plant cities and where should we plant trees in cities to make them, uh, you know, cooler? <laughs> yeah. or, or just being able to walk under trees. Uh, but then we have to worry about sustainable uh, dimensions of mm. tree planting. Can we, do we have enough water, for example? Well, how can I help you? Well, our... How can our user community <laughs> help you also? Yeah, the user community can, can, well, all, all tree planting organizations out there that are already users or any organizations around, around tree planting all around the world can, can join in and provide their data and provide their work and make that transparent um, through our um, app when it launches on the 9th of March um, 2018 and to make, to make all of that possible. And um, yeah, on the 9th of March, we would we'd like you to join us on in, in Monaco, together with Prince Albert 
um, the second. Um, so we can. This sounds can good to me. <laughs> <laughs> and all of my friends can yeah. go with me. Right? <laughs> meet, exactly. Meet, the, meet, meet uh, this special group of people. But yeah, that's. I, I so much appreciate you taking a couple minutes and sharing with our users what you're up to. I think, from my perspective, our users can start planting more trees. <laughs> that is the that is the easiest thing everyone <laughs> That's the can easiest do. Thing. Yeah, but also get behind your movement and tell people about it. And uh, well, well, we'll be watching for your app so we can mm -hmm. all participate better. Thank you. For Fantastic. That. Thank Appreciate you. It. You're very welcome. <laughs>